Good evening. It's 5.01 and time for the preliminary budget hearing of Indian River County. We're going to begin with an invocation by Jeffrey Smith and then the, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which I'll lead. Please rise. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for this uh, venue where we can do thy work, Lord. You say in your word to trust you with all our hearts and all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our paths, Lord. How appropriate that is for us as we sit here today and discuss the budget for the next year for this county. Lord, help us to make the right decisions and bless these men who sit up here that have to uh, make these decisions, Lord. Just give them strength and courage to do what they need to do. Lord, we also ask uh, as the 10th anniversary of 9-11 is coming up, Lord, we just ask a special blessing on those that lost their lives that day, Lord, and those that um, were heroes. And Lord, let us always remember that this country is what it is and because people gave their lives for it. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to note before we get on with the substance of the meeting that Commissioner Wheeler very much wanted to be here tonight, and he was actually in the building until very recently, but he had a health problem which he had to attend to, so we will miss his presence tonight and wish him well and hope that he'll be at the meeting on the 14th. We now move to the budget overview, which will be given by the County Administrator, Mr. Joseph Baird. Joe? Yes, Commissioners. The budget you have in front of you tonight is $258,404,842. That's $60,359,981 less than last year, or 18.9%. The budget also is, uh, is down $5 million in Avalon taxes overall, which is 6.4%. We're down about $31 million, or $30.9 million, from the year 2006-2007, or almost a third. So we're taxing a third less than we did in 2006 and 7. The, uh, in this budget also, the, the BCC departments have deleted nine positions. Um, the constitutionals either have deleted 47 or are leaving 47 vacant. Um, one of the main contributors, uh, contributing factors for us to be able to get this budget down to this level is the fact that um, the, the, the retirement savings of about 4.2 million, of which 3.6 million is uh, from is in the taxing funds. Also, the elimination of our nine full-time positions amount to about 625,000 savings. A elimination of a, a position and a reorganization in fleet management saved us 125,000. Um, we've reduced our overtime 56,000. Also in this budget, we're for, the fir for the first time, we're dipping in the general fund um, reserves. In the proposed budget, we, we have budgeted eroding the general fund reserves by uh, $1,660,000. The, uh, the uh, taxing funds are down a total of $18.4 million. That's a basic summary of um, the, the, the overall budget. Um, the next thing that we will probably take up is the general fund. The general fund proposed uh, budget has a millage of 3.0892. That's 7.03% below rollback. The proposed budget is 69 million six hundred eighty thousand nine hundred fifty one dollars. That's 11.7% less, less than last year, or $9,236,767. Um, part of the reason we got to this decrease is that also there's either, there's 52 positions, um, eliminated between the constitutionals, which is 47, and 6 in the, uh, in, in, in the, um, I mean 5 full time in the commission under the commission's control. In the five under the commission's control, 
is uh, one in the commission office, one full-time secretary. We have decreased two full-time librarians and two full-time park positions. Uh, and the sheriff has about 46 positions, either he's eliminating or leaving vacant. Um, the total cost under our operations in the general fund, there's a savings of $288,392. Our ad loan taxes are down in the general fund, a total of $2,810,982, or 6.4%. We've also had to reduce our interest earnings by 205000 due to the low interest rates. And that's basically the uh, our summary today of of the of the general fund. Is that going to be it for your opening yes. remarks? What you do now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay, and I'll go ahead and read the proposed millage, which is three point zero eight nine two, which is a seven point three percent below rollback. And a proposed budget of sixty-nine million six hundred eighty thousand nine hundred fifty-one dollars. And I'll now open this up for public comments. Are there any public comments on the general fund? There being none, we'll close the public comment section, and I'll ask for a motion up to adopt the tentative millage. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to uh, adopt the proposed millage rate of 3.0892, which is 7.03% below rollback. Second. We have a motion for Commissioner Flesher, a second from Commissioner Davis. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Commissioner Wheeler absent. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Davis. Move to make a uh, move to uh, adopt the tentative bud proposed uh, the tentative budget of sixty nine million six hundred and eighty thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars. Second. Motion for Commissioner Davis. Second from Commissioner Flesher. All any co other conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes four zero. Moving on to the MSTU, we have a proposed millage of one point zero seven three three, which is a nine point three. 0.3% below rollback. The proposed budget is $24,470,418. I'll now open, well, any discussion among the commissioners? I'll now open it up to the public. Anybody from the public want to speak on the MSTU? Mr. Johnson. If you would please, for the record, your name and address. Uh, Bob Johnson, Coral Wind Subdivision. I would like to um, propose that the <coughs> um, franchise fee for the utilities department of 6% uh, be reduced to 5%. This, imp this, would, uh, in this uh, line item is not, as best I can tell, uh, had a uh, uh, a good review like the rest of the line items and uh, I, I think that this would benefit all of the uh, residents in the county that receive county water and sewer uh, by reducing their utility bill by 1%. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Any other comments from the audience? There being none, we'll close the public discussion portion of it. Any other comments from the commission? Chair, I entertain a motion on the proposed millage. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the proposed millage of 1.0733, that is 9.03% below rollback. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Davis, a second from Commissioner Flesher. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Take a motion on the tenant on the. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the tentative budget for the MSTU of twenty-four million four hundred and seventy thousand four hundred and eighteen dollars. Motion from Commissioner Davis. Second. Second from Commissioner Flesher. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes four zero. We now go to the transportation fund, which has no millage. The proposed budget is thirteen million six one thousand nope sixteen thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars yeah. any discussion among the commissioners I'll open it up to the public anybody from the public wish to speak on the transportation budget 
No one from the public wishing to speak will close the public portion. Chairman, move to adopt the proposed budget of thirteen million sixteen thousand one hundred fifty-seven dollars. Second. Second. Motion for Commissioner O'Brien. Second for Commissioner Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes four zero. Emergency Services District. The proposed millage is one point seven one four eight and is eight point one two percent below rollback. The proposed budget is twenty five million six hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars. Any comments from the commission? I'll open it up to the public. Mr. Geiger, welcome and your name and address for the record, please. Walter Geiger, 3944, 58th Circle, Borough Beach, Florida. Back in uh, June of this year, I uh, authored a letter from the Taxpayer Association encouraging the, the county commissioner and the manager to look at the sick leave and the annual leave to bring those numbers down so that we don't have such huge payouts for people when they retire. I attended a couple of the negotiation meetings uh, with the Teamsters, and I talked to Mr. Sexton today, and he said that the negotiations had been completed, and he thinks that they're happy with, both sides are happy with what the outcome has been, and they will be forwarded to the Commission uh, within the next week, I believe. Uh, the other part of that letter, of course, the one the numbers which are most out of line for retirement is the International Association of Firefighters, which is the firefighter and paramedics. And their annual leave and sick leaves are much higher than everybody else. But of course you can't, I don't know whether you can't, I'm not an attorney, so I understand because there's still an existing contract that's been extended to 12-13, you're not able to make any changes in those rules until that contract is back up for negotiation. So as an association, we're assuming that when that con or like about eight months before that contract expires, that the staff will will meet with firefighters and try to uh, negotiate with them, similar to what they did with the Teamsters. I'm assuming that that's going to happen. The other thing with the, with the uh, Emergency Services District, uh, from what I read in the bulletin here, that the county had to supplement $2.3 million from the fund reserves for the Emergency Services District. Now, the contract still won't expire next year, and I'm sure next year we're going to have a difficult time, too. I'd hate to see us have to use another couple million dollars from the reserves to keep that going. I think there's certain ways that firefighter paramedics can become more efficient by having fewer ambulances, by changing some of the procedures of moving some of the things around. I hope that during the next year that we can explore those things and possibly come up with some changes in the service personnel of some of the stations so that we can maybe maybe save half a million or a million dollars and then only take a million out of the reserves instead of the whole two million. So I would like to be able to, well, talk with the manager and staff and see if there's anything that we can work out next year to reduce their budget so we don't have to use so much of our reserves. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'd like to take this opportunity, Mr. Geiger, just to thank you for your continued work on the county budget. You had a very good paper on the emergency services. And I think it helps us commissioners to get this type of sort of positive, well thought out public input from the members of the public who have no sort of vested interest in the organization. So I thank you for your efforts and I hope you'll continue them for many years to come. Thank you. And I'd like to point out where that we, uh, the firefighters, Union IFS was very cooperative a few years ago in the, in the downturn of the economy, and and they 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 had the opportunity to take raises, and they negotiated not to take a raise until the economy turns around and our tax roll grows. So I'd like to thank them for that. If you look all across the state, most municipalities and counties are fighting with their union over those very issues, and ours stepped up to the table. They saw the economy was bad, and we should thank them for that. Also, part of this budget, one of the reasons that this budget was able to go down is that there's a million sixty-three thousand in retirement savings, 
And this year, all our employees, including public safety, have had to pick up 3% towards their pension, so they're really earning less money, and a lot of the public doesn't realize that. Not only have they had to forego raises, but they're also now having to pay part of their pension, and I think um, I need to bring that to everyone's attention. But we're very fortunate, looking at uh, all the, uh, the clippings I get, we're very fortunate. We've had a, our firefighters have professionally stood up and, and helped us in these hard economic times. Uh, Rita, I think this whole board understands you, how helpful our, our employees have been and how necessary yes. their sacrifices have been for us to be able to keep our millage rate as low as it is. I know that I appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure every, every commissioner here does. And I, I'll second what you say. We're only able to make this budget because of the work and sacrifices of our employees who obviously make this a great county. I'll ask if there's anybody else from the public who'd like to speak on emergency services. There being no one else, I'll close the public portion of this. Any discussion from the commissioners? Mr. I'll entertain a mo motion to adopt the tentative millage. I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt the proposed millage rate of 1.7148, which is 8.12% below rollback. We have a motion from Commissioner Flesher. Second. Second from Commissioner O'Brien. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Chair, I'll accept our motion to adopt the tentative budget. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the proposed budget of $25,696,785. Second. Motion by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner Flesher. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Environmentally sensitive land acquisition. The proposed millage is... 0.0717, the rollback rate does not apply, and the proposed budget amount is $1,057,596. Any comments from the commissioners? I'll open it up to the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on the environmentally sensitive land acquisition budget? There being no one from the public who wishes to speak, we'll close the public input section. Mr. And Chairman, make a motion to adopt the proposed village of 0 0.0717. Motion Commissioner O'Brien. I'll second it. Any discussion among the commissioners? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4-0. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the tentative budget of $1,057,596. Second. Motion from Commissioner Davis, second from Commissioner Flesher. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. On to land acquisition bonds, the 2004 referendum. The proposed millage is 0 0.3647. The rollback rate does not apply, and the proposed budget amount is $4,748,441. Anybody from the Commission want to make some comments? No, I'll open up to the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on the land acquisition bonds, 2004 referendum monies? There being no one from the public who wishes to speak, we'll close the public input section. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to adopt the proposed millage of 0 0.3647. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner O'Brien, a second from Commissioner Flesher. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes 4-0. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the tentative budget for the 2004 land acquisition bond referendum of $4,748,441. Motion from Commissioner okay. Davis, second from Commissioner O'Brien. Any discussion? I'll take the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4-0. The aggregate proposed millage is 5.0663 and is 7.66% below rollback. We'll move on to the Indian River County Board of County Commissioners sitting as the Solid Waste Disposal District Board. And we will... I'll, I'll tell you what, Joe, I'll let you announce this part of it. <laughs> um, this is the only place in the whole budget that we do have an increase, and it's it's about, uh, it's a 5%. We For the last, uh, is it 10 years or over, we've had a decrease constant, so we finally, we've had to increase it this year. Um, the Solid Waste Disposal District has a proposed budget of $10,474,340. That's a decrease of $242,117 below last year, or 2.3%. Now, our WGU residential charge is going to be $42.40. That's a 5% increase over last year. 
which and it amounts to sixty seven dollars and eighty four cents the um, commercial WGU is going to be twenty nine dollars and thirty nine cents that's a four point six percent in increase over last year and the readiness to use fee is eighteen dollars and thirteen cents and that's a six percent increase over last year um, also there's an eighteen dollar and forty six per ton landfill ash product disposal fee now which wasn't in place and that's partly to deal with ENEOS so and that's it in summary thank you very much I'll open it up to the public anybody from the public wishing to speak on the solid waste disposal district there you go well, Mr. Johnson uh, Bob Johnson Crowland subdivision um, according to the guidelines of the county um, the, the uh, users of water and utilities have to pay a 6% utility uh, fee on their gross revenues. So here's what's happening. It looks like all right, the, uh, re the utilities rate of 6% is not being reduced. Right? It continues in to be uh, exact charge of water and utilities. But on now, we're finding that the utilities department, solid waste portion of it, is going to be increased by 5%. So not only do the residents of have to pay their 6% franchise fee, and there's no state requirement for that, by the way. It's a county requirement. To, um, the Now we find that the solid waste department, part of the utilities department, has to uh, take a loss at 5%, which the residents will now have to pay more for uh, their solid waste disposal uh, activities. So I'd just like you to uh, consider that. Uh, let me explain that. There's a utility franchise, not a utility tax, but a utility franchise tax on FPNL. Anyone uh, on our utilities? It does not apply to our solid waste charges right now. It, uh, the solid waste districts on your tax bill, but our utilities, City River Beach utilities, and the um, county utility, anyone, anyone who has one of those bills will pay the 6% franchise tax, and that's been in existence for, for many years, and, and it's negotiated through a franchise agreement with FPNL and a franchise agreement with City River Beach, and then we have one on the garbage haulers in the county, so that's been in existence. This year, that that's going to decrease about four hundred thousand dollars less than prior the prior year. And this looks like a, a graph from Jason, which shows what the solid waste disposal district. Well, basically, it's rate history. So I'll let you go ahead and explain it, Jason. Yeah, it was eighty dollars and eight cents back in nineteen ninety five ninety six. This year, we're proposing in two thousand eleven twelve sixty seven dollars and eighty four cents. So you can see that. Over that span, it's gone down considerably, roughly about thirteen dollars. Or um, so we're finally after after lowering it all these years, we're finally having to increase it slightly. We do not believe we'll have to increase it next year. We think we can stabilize it. Uh, and I don't know if I, how correct I am on this, but part of my perception is that part of the cost of the landfill are due to the county's recycling efforts. We're taking. We're recycling almost as much as we have in the past, but the amount that the county gets from recycled goods, I believe, has decreased of late. And the state is also going to, or is in the process of mandating, that we capture a higher percentage of recycling goods. So over this period from 1995 to the present, we've not only reduced rates substantially, but we've actually added services which we weren't responsible for prior to that. So again, I'm, I'm quite actually proud of the, the job that the county has done in a lot of areas, including this area. I think they've done very good work and have been very responsive to the citizens. So I, I hate any rate increase as much as anybody else, but I think this is, is particularly good value for the dollar. There we're still open to the public. If there's anybody else from the public who'd like to speak on this, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Bob Johnson, Corwin Subdivision. Uh, one of the things that's sort of perplexing um, on the solid waste is is that we pay the solid waste fees 
then if we uh, have a tree um, that needs to be uh, cut down and somebody else takes it to the solid waste dump for disposal then there's another charge that they uh, they pay so you're you're actually paying double your it, it seems like to me there ought to be some kind of provision where those of us that have uh, uh, property uh, don't pay a double fee for uh, uh, disposal by a, say a third party or second party uh, we we have our lawns mowed trimmed by somebody and then this other person uh, second party uh, again uh, takes some logs or whatever necessary to the dump and uh, ha you have to he has to pay a fee to dispose of those so um, it's not all it's a little more complex and being simple yeah let me explain the uh, solid waste charge is for household garbage the garbage you do when you you throw away from what, what you eat in, in your household and it's equates to 1.6 tons as estimated the average household uses so that's for the household garbage also in this charge is also the the um, public of the house gets to use at one of our five convenience centers that they want to haul and they can haul their um, tree and debris there if it's under four inches in diameter and six feet long we can cut it up and haul it there and, and dump it now um, if you have a commercial hauler do it he has to pay because they have to pay its weight at the um, they have to pay for dumping it at the landfill so there's a they go across the scales and it's based on weight but a lot of those businesses they they did they did not pay in their assessment for that type of business so it's picked up coming across the scales so that's the difference anybody else from the public want to speak we'll close the public input <coughs> portion any comments from the commissioners <coughs> that being none i'd be happy to get a motion mr chairman i'd move that we adopt the proposed charges of $42.40 per residential waste generation unit, which is a 5% increase, $29.39 per commercial waste generation unit, which is a 4.63% increase, a readiness to use fee of $18.13, which is a 6.02% increase, and a landfill ash product disposal fee of eighteen dollars and forty six cents per ton. Motion from Commissioner O'Brien. I'll second. second from Commissioner Davis. Any of the discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes four zero. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the proposed budget of ten million dollars ten million four hundred seventy four thousand three hundred and forty dollars. Second. Motion from Commissioner O'Brien. Second from Commissioner Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes four zero. Jason. We now have the adoption of the non valorum ad valorum non ad valorum assessment charges and I'll let you read through all of the rates if you would, both the MSBUs and the street lighting districts. Thank you, Commissioner Solari. All of these rates are a per parcel acre charge. Uh, they are also the same as the current year, so there is no change. First is Vera Lake Estates MSBU, that's nineteen dollars per parcel acre. East Gifford Stormwater MSBU, ten dollars. Now the street lighting districts beginning with Gifford, $25 per parcel acre, Laurelwood, $18, Rockridge, $8, Bureau Highlands, $23, Porpoise Point, $11, Laurel Court, $27, Tierra Linda, $21, Bureau Shores, $19, Exora Park, $17, Royal Poinciana, $28, Roseland Road, $1, Whispering Pines, $16, Moorings, $10, Walker's Glen, $22, Glendale Lakes, $40, Floralton Beach, $38, West Wabasso, $21. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. On the, any comments from the commissioners? I'll open up to the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on the MSBUs or the street lighting districts? There being no one from the public who wishes to comment, I'll close. Mr. Chairman, I uh, would like to make a motion that we adopt the tentative charges as read into the record by Budget Director Jason Brown. Second. Motion from Commissioner Brown, second from Commissioner Davis. Any other comments from the commissioners? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. We now have the approval of the non ad valorem <coughs> dollar budgets. Jason, if you'd go ahead and announce the five listed funds. Sure. 
other special revenue funds, $29,513,396. Other debt service fund, $1,238,423. Capital project funds, $14,843,099. Enterprise funds, $41,208,699. Internal service funds, $22,456,537. Thank you very much. I'll now open it up to the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on the non-ad non -ad valorem dollar budgets? No one from the public wish to speak. We'll close the public input section. Gentlemen, any comments? I'll accept them. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we <coughs> adopt the tentative budgets as read into the record by Budget Director Jason Brown. Second. A motion from Commissioner O'Brien, second from Commissioner Davis. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 4 0. Chairman Solari, can I say just, uh, I'd like to say a couple words about the budget before we get in? Sorry. I'd like to first of all thank all my employees and the department heads for the cooperation. We couldn't come in with a budget like this without them. And also the constitutional officers, and we're very fortunate they all cooperated. The sheriff, we're very fortunate the sheriff in most counties does not cooperate. Ours has always cooperated. He didn't like the reductions, but has done it like a gentleman and cooperate understanding. So we're very fortunate. I'd like to thank them all for their cooperation. Jason can your mic. Jason can put up one more. I'd like to follow up a little bit on what Mr. Baird said. I think one of the most impressive things or most meaningful things to this community is while all of us understand we've had a very hard economic period over the last four years and many of our citizens have suffered substantially more than others. I mean, there have been a tremendous number of homes foreclosed and a tremendous number of our friends and neighbors are, are out of work and still out of work. But I think this county, with a tremendous effort from all its employees and an, a real effort from even contractors who deal with the county, have done a tremendous job. And I think this graph it reflects it tremendously well. In the 06, 07 period, we took in over $100 million in ad valorem taxes. And we're now down this year, we're going to take in somewhere around $71 million when all is said and done. And that's over $30 million left in the taxpayers' pockets, which they can use to pay that monthly mortgage payment or pay for a doctor's bill or, or pay with for things which are tremendously essential. And uh, I don't know if anything that I'm prouder of in my three years on this board than being with a group of, of people who could do that. So uh, those are my comments. Are there any others from any other commissioners? Mr. Chair, I would reiterate both what you said and what uh, County Administrator uh, Baird mentioned, particularly with the constitutional officers and staff and the department heads. Um, we, we talked a little bit about the, the firefighters union, and they uh, amended their contract not to take any uh, pay increases, but all county employees um, are doing that as well, the Teamsters and then just the regular non-union rank-and-file employees. Everybody has stepped up to... Um, try to reduce the impact to the, the taxpayers as much as possible. So I think the entire county public service staff, from the firefighters to the Teamsters to the, the regular employees, of, all deserve kudos for getting by. And then was, as was mentioned, not only have they not gotten any pay raises going on three years now, but also this year they're having to take 3% out of their pocket uh, towards their pension. So that, that is a, a cut in their take home. So um, it, it, it's tough times. But I think the Indiana County should be proud of their public servants who have stepped up and tried to do everything they can to maintain the quality of living that we love here in Indiana County and try to keep the tax burden down as much as possible. So. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Yeah, I did, just to follow up on that, just basically maintaining the level of service as best we possibly can in these economic times, and everybody's to be applauded and appreciated. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. It's now my pleasure to announce the time and place of the final budget hearing. The final budget hearing will be held at 5.01 p.m. on Wednesday, September 14, 2011, at the County Administration Building, a, Commission Chambers, 1801 27th Street, Vero Beach, Florida. And for all of those in the, the home audience listening in, we do have seats for you here. So on the 14th, if you, you really want an exciting time, join us at the final budget hearings. Thank you very much, and we adjourn this meeting.